So I'm going to try to add this to the front of the video. These brackets that you put on are marked. There's a DR, which is one of the bigger ones. No, oh, it's DF, sorry. That one. It's marked DF, which is driver's front. That one is a DR, driver's rear. The one over there is PR, PF, sorry. Passenger front and then passenger rear. So make sure you look for those symbols so you don't put the wrong ones in the wrong place. The back ones might be the same. I'm not positive, but the front ones are probably different. So just pay attention to that when you start off. Welcome to the driveway garage. My new Nerf bars came in for my 2003 Tundra. I'm pretty sure this is a similar operation or procedure on a lot of vehicles. Let me show you what I have. So I did a unboxing video and of course there's the box that came in. There's the other half. Of course you got two Nerf bars. I went with chrome because it matches my bumpers. I thought about black. I may wish I'd gone with black, but what I did is I pre-assembled them. That way I wasn't confused when I was underneath the truck working on it. And I wanted to make sure I had all the hardware and I knew where it went. So this is the driver's side. This is the front. So the curved part goes towards the front. And this piece of metal that is kind of triangle shaped, that goes toward the front. And this iron bar here, or galvanized, is going to go inside the frame. And I guess it gives it more support, I'm assuming. So, this goes through, and then on the other side you put a flat washer, a locking washer, and the nut. And this will bolt this to the frame. Now on the part that goes into the tube, I've got the bolt, a locking washer, and a washer, and that screws into a bolt that's welded into the Nerf bar. On the back side, it's similar, but the shape is different. Now when I first started putting this together, I had the driver's side, you know, the passenger side, and I was trying to put the driver's side hardware on it. And that's when I realized you have to have the bigger piece of iron at the front because with that angle, the Nerf bar will not fit inside of this narrow piece of metal at the front. So once I figured that out, I, I got this mounted. Again, you have a bolt, locking washer, regular washer, and it's just loosely attached right now. What I'm, I'm trying to decide when I get underneath the I'll see what's easier. I may try to put this up on a couple boxes or something to hold it in place, leave it like it is, and just take these top bolts out, put those into the frame. I think if with uh, some boxes or wood or something, I can hold this up where it belongs, and then I don't have to unbolt the whole thing and start over. Then your top one again, now when I got this all together, I had two washers left over. So that's when I figured out, they must want a washer on here also. Because on the other side, you've got the big washer, the locking nut, and the nut. And that's going to hold that to the frame. Same thing down here as the front. You've got the bolt, locking washer, and a washer. It screws right into the Nerf bar. Now it's just finger tight because you want to have some adjustment. Make sure you get everything lined up the way you want it. Now this one will slide up and down, this one slides back and forth. So you've got some adjustment you can do. So once I realized I had two extra washers, I went ahead and put one here and one on the passenger side, and I guess that'll give that a little more stability. And it's exactly the same, except opposite, on the passenger side. The wide one goes to the curve, Otherwise, because of the angle, it would not fit in this flat piece of iron. So let me get this set up on my truck. I'm going to use these boxes, hopefully. Maybe that'll be close to the right height. If I can get it close, then I can get one bolt in. Can then hand tighten it. And then I can raise up the other end, get the other bolt in. 
Now this is the front of the passenger side, and this is what goes on the frame there. Now I don't know why this one is four inches long, and that one's over a foot long. Maybe they figure from experience the driver getting in and out puts more force on it, I'm not sure. And then once I get under there, see what I have to work with, maybe I'll have an answer to that. I'll pause this for now and I'll get everything set up, find out what kind of sockets these are, uh, or what size the bolts are. It'll probably say in the instructions maybe. I'll get set up and I'll start putting this together and hopefully if I can get my camera set up in the right place, you guys can watch it. This is not going to be easy to film and do it, so I'm just going to show you what I'm doing step by step. I reached up inside the frame behind here. Um, there's a hole. You can reach that rod, the long one, up inside there. And there's a mount right here. Right behind it, there's a hole there. And that's where that long rod goes, or that piece of metal with the bolt. Once you get that in there, you kind of have to hold it with your finger. And then you get this piece of metal started. Back this out a little bit. And you get that on there, and then you put the flat washer, and then the locking washer, and then the nut. Now that's there, and you can hand tighten it and give yourself some adjustment. Now I'm going to, uh, I couldn't put the running board or the Nerf bar under here and then reach under here, so I took it apart. It gives me some room to work. Now I'm going to get the Nerf bar underneath here so I can tell which of these holes at the back needs to have that other one in there. So let me get that situated. Well, it makes sense. It's gonna go where the old one was, which is, if my camera will focus, right here, which there's another mount, body mount, right there. It's 64 inches from the front one, center to center, it's a pretty close idea. And you just have to reach up inside of here with your uh, bolt and washer and then put the hardware on there so i'm going to go ahead and do that it's right as a reference point it's right where the box begins straight underneath there that'll give you a good idea well i got that hardware on there i just ran the bolt through the frame put the metal bracket on the bolt and then put the locking washer well the big washer locking washer nut on it and it's finger tight so I'm gonna scoot this piece of carpet I have over and put the nerf bar on it then I can raise it up into position not scratch it all up uh, yeah and then I can just bolt it in place so I got this old throw rug I use it a lot it stays on crawling around on this asphalt especially when it's hot but for now I'm going to use it to protect the nerf bar so I should just be able to slide the nerf bar on the carpet, raise up one end, run the bolt in, raise up the other end, run the bolt in, and then start tightening it up. Should turn out pretty good. The hardest part of this job was taking off the old nerf bar brackets because they were super rusty, as you can see here. And the first one I did, that's right here, I ended up taking a grinder cutting wheel and I cut part of that nut away. It's the only way I could get it off. And then I stumbled across a torch I had. It's a little handheld propane torch. And I started heating the nuts up as hot as I could get them. And then after a couple, two or three times of heating them, I was able to get them loose. So the rest of them were a lot easier. But that first one was a burger. You can see how rusty that was. One of them broke off, so the guy just got under there with a uh, reciprocating saw. I always forget the name of it. Sawzall. And uh, there's one of them. He just cut it off with the sawzall. The brackets are perfectly good. They're pretty heavy-duty metal. And I could have reused them, but I don't need to since this came with all the hardware. So, if you're doing the same kind of project... Getting your old bolts out is probably going to be the most work you're going to have to do. Let me get this bolted up in there and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, it's mounted loosely, not permanent, 
but I'm going to tighten the bolts up now. So they do give you a little slack, so you can adjust it forward and backwards, uh, up and down a little bit, um, but not not a whole lot, but a little bit. Um, I'm going to show you something on the other one that I don't care for about these. I'll do that in a minute after I get this one tightened up. These are 19 millimeters, so uh, I checked the bolt and the nut. They're both the same 19 millimeters. I'm going to grab my cordless impact. It's not heavy duty. Tighten these up and then I'll finish them off by hand. And see what she looks like. Well, I got her tightened up. I couldn't use my impact because I couldn't get under there with it. Not enough room. So I used, end up using just a socket and a ratchet. Now the front one I just did because you got the bolt that goes into the nerf bar and the bolt with a piece of iron on it so I didn't have to use a wrench on it. But on the back one, it's kind of a tight fit in here. I couldn't get my regular socket on there to hold because the bolt sticks out too far. So I put the wrench on the front and I use the socket on the back. It's nice and tight. One side done, the other side is going to be the same. Just in reverse but let me go inside i'll show you something i don't like about these so the way these are made you got this plate in here with a, bolt, a nut on it that's welded but you got a quarter inch gap here and it seems to me they should have put some kind of spacer on there to take up that gap because this metal is a lot thinner and i'm just afraid getting in and out of the truck you know you put your weight on here it's going to crush down this metal over time and it's going to get loose and you're going to have to keep tightening it. They should have had about a quarter inch spacer, spacer in there to keep that from crushing down. I could be wrong, but just from my experience. Now these came with, this was on there when it was just to protect the end cap, but that's not a spacer for there. And the front and the back's both the same, so I guess time will tell. But I really do wish they'd put something to fill that gap in that was solid. And I guess if I want to, I could get some a couple of big washers and put them on here. I may do that and uh, take up that space so there's less chance of them getting loose over time. Well, that's about it. It's, it's not a bad project. I guess you could give yourself an hour start to finish, but it's going to make the truck look a lot nicer. I had them on my other truck, my 2006, and it just made it easier getting in and out of the truck. And of course, not everybody's going to like the chrome. Uh, actually, my bumper, front bumper's plastic, I forgot. But the back bumper's chrome, so it blends in with that. Now, if I had a black bumper I'd have definitely gone with the black ones but I think it makes the truck look a little sharper but some people don't like chrome anyway thanks for watching hope this helps you out if you decide to do this bonus footage make sure when you put the back ones on that the nerf bar is up above the bracket see how it sticks down a little bit there you want to have that centered on that hole so it's supported evenly I noticed it on the other side and I raised it up. So I've got to raise this one up just about a half inch so it's supported evenly. So just pay attention to that when you're bolting it, tightening it all up.